So I was at church today praying for people that came down front, you know, sick people or people just dealing with mental issues and things like that. And uh, most of the today was just sick people. And so I got to pray for about five of them. Well, one of them, I go to pray for this woman and I put my hand on her head and I pray for her healing. And then I blow on her chest. And that might be kind of weird for, you know, people, but here's the deal. In, in the gospel of John, Jesus blows on his disciples and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And so it's a faith activation point. I'm expecting the Holy Spirit in that moment to come upon that person and to do the work that only he can do because I'm just a man. I don't actually heal people. He does it. And so I'm believing he'll come upon it because he's omniscient. He knows exactly what that person needs. And so he's going to do the work. And, and it's, I'm going to have faith that he's going to do that. What ended up happening to this lady, though, I prayed for, you know, five people. But the one lady, she actually fell backwards on the ground and no one was there to catch her. And so this happens sometimes when you pray for people. Um, it's only happened maybe for about five or six people I've prayed for in my life at this point. But what is happening in that moment? That's kind of the big question. And so in, throughout history, we actually find a lot of instances of this happening, especially during revivals. People like Jonathan Edwards um, and George Whitfield, they saw this happen in their ministry. Um, John Wesley saw this happen in his ministry. People would, you know, what would later be coined terms like fall out or be slain in the spirit during prayer meetings. And so what exactly is happening? And is there any biblical evidence for this, this practice or the Holy Spirit to do this? And, uh, you know, a question in the back of a lot of people's mind is, well, is it demonic? Because a person is falling out. Like there's, they have very little control over themselves at that point. And then also, is there such a, you know, do people fake it? Is it, is it something people are just faking? And so before we jump into that, I wanted to kind of go to scripture here because actually, interestingly enough, my wife last night was uh, reading the book of Daniel and, uh, and specifically a part in Daniel where he has an encounter like this. And so I'm just going to read that part, but basically Daniel's been praying and his prayers are going unanswered. And uh, the angel Gabriel shows up, I believe it's Gabriel, shows up to deliver a message saying your, your, your prayers have been heard and I'm here to tell you what they are. And so um, he says, he sees this angel and he's beautiful and powerful. And he says, and I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision and no strength was left in me. So that's kind of an important phrase there. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed. And as I retained no strength, then I heard the sound of his words. And as I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in deep sleep with my face to the ground. And so Daniel was so overcome by the glory of God in this moment that he literally fell. He said he had no strength left in him. And this is what happens to people when they do fall out in the spirit. They literally, so the word glory comes from the word that means weight. So the weight of glory is pushing them down and they have no strength left in them. And so let me give you another example, which we find in the New Testament, which is Paul. And it's in Acts 9. That Daniel reference was Daniel 10, if you want to look it up. But in Acts 9, Paul, before he was called Saul, he meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. Um, it says, now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you so persecuting me? So he falls to the ground and then later he gets back up and he finds out that he is blind. And so he has an encounter with Jesus, God of the universe, and it causes him to fall to the ground. And so we do have biblical precedent and you're going to find different instances in the Bible where it says they became like dead men. And that's a good description of, of what happens to these people. So on that note, what exactly does happen to someone when they fall out? Well, for me, the only reason I'm a Christian today is because I had an encounter with God very similar to that. And a man prayed for me. And I was a skeptic. But a man prayed for me and I fell to the ground. I was 10 years old. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't grow up in a church where that happened. So what I do remember is the love and the peace of God over, so overcame me. And I knew that God existed and that he loved me. And then as I was on the ground, I saw visions. And one of those has come to pass. And the other one, I believe, will come to pass. So sometimes I think people are encountering God um, in that state, getting their flesh completely out of the way. 
so they can be open to the Spirit of God and what the Spirit of God wants to do in their life. And in my life, what he did is he delivered me from depression because when I was 10, that's why I came down from my problem was I was depressed and I woke up the next day and I was just filled with joy and I knew God loved me and I gave my life to Jesus. So an encounter like that with the Holy Spirit can so overwhelm someone um, that they know God exists and they know God loves them and God has done something in their life. Sometimes I've heard people receive different giftings in those moments. Um, and then a lot of people I've prayed for haven't like fallen over like that, but instead I'll pray for them, especially people that deal with anxiety or fear. I'll pray for them to be delivered from that and that the Holy Spirit, the peace of the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And those people often tell me they just want to lay down. Like you just want to fall asleep or lay down because the peace of God is so sweet to them. And so that's another way I think people will fall down under the Holy Spirit is just the peace of God rather than merely the overwhelming power of the Lord. So could it be demonic? And my answer to that is sometimes, and that might surprise people, but I have seen people fall out like that and it be caused by a demon that is trying to fake. Basically, their goal is to get the minister to stop, like stop praying for this person. And so um, I was praying for one woman and she started feeling faint and then she started to go out like literally like pass out and i was like oh man god is like holy spirit's going upon this woman she's getting delivered no and the, the 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 reason i found out about that is because she told me that she was like fearful and panicky and the gist is that jesus doesn't cause that in people the holy spirit doesn't cause fear in people or panic in people it causes peace and love and joy all the good fruits of the spirit come from the holy spirit so if a person is enduring um you know n negative thoughts and feelings and they're, they're going out like that then it's usually what we call someone taking a dive like a demon taking a dive basically just falling um, because the minister is used to seeing people come under this power of the Holy Spirit, and it's a good thing. And so that in that case, it's a bad thing, and that person needs actual deliverance. And so you need to talk to people, which can be hard to do when there's a lot of people. Um, and then so could it be people faking it? Absolutely. Absolutely people can fake it, and they do. And if you're in a line and you're being prayed for and you're seeing people falling out left and right, you might be like, oh, this is culturally what you're supposed to do. And I would just encourage you, don't. Like if the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and you're going to fall out like that, you're not going to be able to really resist it. Um, and it's, in other words, let me put it this way. Um, it's going to be authentic. Just let it be authentic. Uh, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you in great power and you're going to lose, you're going to lose strength and you're going to fall. I was talking to my friend Angie and I was like, have you ever heard of anyone getting hurt when they fell? Because the first time she fell, apparently no one caught her. And uh, her argument was basically like, well, if it's really God, then no, like you're not going to get hurt. And she'd never heard of anyone that did. But if you and your flesh just decide to get up there and someone lays hands on you and you're just going to jump flow backwards and whatever, just be, be careful. I wouldn't do that. So is this a biblical thing? I think, yeah, I think we have some precedent for it. Uh, I just read two passages, but there's many more where people fall under um, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and is it something that's going on today? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're going to find that it's going to occur even more and more in, in churches. So when you do see it happen, don't freak out about it. Um, pray for the person and pray that they receive whatever God has for them. So, uh, I hope this helps clarify that. And my question to you is, have you ever experienced this in your own life? And if so, tell me about it below. I want to know what you felt, um, what you saw, what you heard, what happened before and after. I would love to know. And if you've ever prayed for someone and you've seen this happen, I would love to know your thoughts on everything I just said and if there's anything to it that you would add. So thanks.